I think I'm live with everyone here. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello. There we go. Now we're live. Hello, everyone. Hi. Happy 2023, you guys. I actually ordered a special hat for this webinar that said Happy New Year 2023, and it didn't come in time. So I'm so mad, but I did get this t-shirt for you guys. So I hope you guys all like it. Um, hello, everyone. Where are you guys all streaming from tonight, today, this morning, wherever you're calling in from? Um, I'm really happy and excited tonight um, to talk to all you guys, educate all you guys, um, really get into the nitty gritty of why people are chronically ill. And I'm going to spill all the tea on this webinar for you guys. I'm going to give you secrets and solutions and it's good. I'm going to go long with you guys. Like I'm planning an hour and a half with you guys tonight. So not just an hour, but an hour and a half. You guys are from all over. I love this. Sweet home, Alabama. Ah, I love it. It's going so fast. I can't even keep up. You guys are all over. This is amazing. Amazing. Thank you guys for being here. Um, what it tells me when I see people from around the world who tune into a webinar all at the same time is that there is a huge interest in people learning to heal themselves. And there is a huge gap in medicine for teaching people what's important and how to do that. Am I right? I truly feel like that was what propelled me into doing what I'm doing now. And I just want to ask you guys a couple questions if you're here. If you're here right now, you really want answers. And, you know, all you guys, Louisville, Kentucky, woo woo, go cards. Um, West Virginia, my home state. Yeah, I love it. Okay, guys. So I really want to know, um, you know, who's struggling with their health that's here? Who's having problems? Who's had problems? Maybe they're new, maybe they're chronic, maybe you've been struggling for what seems like years and you need a break. Um, anybody here having health issues? Yeah. Yeah, me, me, yep, everybody. So I feel like there's a vested interest why you guys are here. And um, I want to just take a moment before I get into drainage and why it's so important. So many of you guys, frowny faces, yes. Hormone roller coaster. Hormones. Yeah, guys. Hormones that are dysfunctional are a sign that you need to open drainage. So I do want you guys to know that. Um, you know, and so, so many of you guys are here because you're struggling. And I want to take the time before we get into drainage to, to, for you guys to say something um, to yourself that's very important to healing. Because <clears throat> you have about 60 to 70,000 thoughts per day. And about 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts you had yesterday and the day before that. And if you've gotten into a rut, you know, because neurons that fire together, wire together, right? And your personal reality creates your personality. So if you have been down in the dumps, hard on yourself, a perfectionist, if you have gotten up every day and consciously told yourself that you can't heal, you're not good enough to be healthy, that you don't know what it feels like to be healthy, I want you to stop that right now because that's the old way of manifestation. And you can't change your reality without truly changing who you are at the core. And so your thoughts are the first things that have to change. So I want you guys, if you have the luxury to wake up a little bit earlier and lay in bed and think what you would like your life to look like as a healthy person, and if you can't picture what that looks like, that's your homework. Because you can't live a life that you can't picture. It's almost like you can't get the life you want if you don't know what you want. So you have to be able to feel, hear, sense, see what being healthy would be like. Right? So I want you to say out loud, I am healing. Say it. I am healing. I'm getting better every day. Say it out loud. I'm getting better every day. Thanks, guys. Now, your job is to believe that. Okay. Now we can get started, guys. So I see some people talking about limbic brain rewiring. That's exactly what I'm trying to do with you guys. And so if you've been through a hard time, it's important to reframe that hard time because sometimes when you get over that disease state and you look back on it when you're in remission, you say, that was the best damn thing that ever happened to me. That was the best teacher I ever had. 
So sometimes bad things happen to you to make you a better person. So keep that in mind. Okay, guys, I am getting better every day. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. You can even type it in the chat box and just seal that manifestation right in. Okay, guys, so drainage. So let's get into it. What is drainage? Why did I have this free webinar on drainage? I could have talked about so many things like Lyme and COVID and Epstein-Barr and so many different things that everybody talks about. But I thought it was really important to go over drainage. So drainage are all the things that you guys have probably heard me talk about online on Instagram. You've probably, if you're on Wellness Plus, you've definitely heard me talk about it. We have whole courses and categories on it. But drainage is the things you guys know. And what I want you to know is that if you have a good doctor or practitioner, they should be able to explain things to you like a toddler should be able to understand it. It should not be this mystery thing for you guys. And you should be able to understand the language of your body. And that's what I'm here to do is teach you that your body is hardly ever wrong. And it's society that's wrong. And it's society's toxic elements that keep our drainage pathways blocked. And that's what keeps us chronically ill. So drainage pathways are things you've all heard of. They're things like bowels, like pooping. Let's normalize talking about poop, I always say. And it's really important, you guys, because, you know, we haven't really ta been taught what normal bowel movements are. We have not, right? It's things like sweating. People will tell me, oh, I never sweat or I just glisten. And they're happy about this. But in my world, that's not a great way to release toxins from the body, right? And my belief and philosophy is that there's four things that cause us to be chronically ill, and that's things like toxins, trauma, and the four things to break it down into categories are things like industrial man-made toxins, which include things in our diet, in the air, in the soil, in the water. Um, trauma, especially childhood trauma, packs a more powerful punch. Um, heavy metals. And then um, finally, stealth pathogens, things like Lyme and things like you guys are talking about in the chat box right now. So... If I believe that all those things cause chronic illness, those are things that are stuck inside the body or put inside the body, whether it's an energy or something physical that shouldn't be there. So how do we get things out of the body that don't belong there? I gotta have you guys sweating and pooping and your bile, which I don't think has been explained well to most people, to it, for it to be working properly. And your liver, which when in doubt, especially in the USA or Western countries, look to the liver. It's usually the problem child. So there's all these symptoms. You guys can kind of Sherlock Holmes about your health to figure out which one of your drainage pathways are blocked. Because every human has them, has all of them. And depending on our genes and our genetic haplotype and our experiences, which shape our function and who we are and our personalities, we're all a little different and our drainage can all be blocked in different ways, right? At different levels because of different reasons. So although we all have the same strange pathways, it's very important to be able to screen your own because we're all just a little bit unique and bio-individual, as you can see, right? Um, so if you guys are, if it's frozen for you guys, just refresh the screen. So I would say, so you guys know now what drainage is, right? So I'm just going to go over it with you and go over why some reasons it might be blocked, right? So if you guys understand the toxic world we live in. It's gotten much more toxic, especially in the last 50 years. In fact, our food supply has changed more in the last 50 years than it has in hundreds of years before that. And genes don't change that fast, but epigenetic changes or the tagging on how genes express themselves does change that quickly. And it changes due to a toxic environment. And we're bombarded by so many toxicities every day. It really is ubiquitous in the environment and it's unavoidable. So my point in telling you that is not for you guys to dwell on the subject of, oh my gosh, things are so toxic. People are always trying to kill me. That's not what, that's not what I'm trying to do to you guys. I'm trying to say that if they're unavoidable, how do we get your body back in normalcy and balance? So it's able to say, that's a foreign intruder out of my body. That's a foreign intruder, get out of my body right? And that's key. So really it's society that blocks drainage pathways. It can be traumas that do that too. Conflict shocks, things that we don't anticipate happening in life. Stressors can do this, right? Or continued stress, being stuck in flight or fight can imbalance the body, make your hormones release differently, right? And if you think about it, 
We know through science that your thoughts alone, your thoughts alone are enough to spin you into flight or fight, release excess cortisol, release excess epinephrine or adrenaline, right? So it's very important to have emotional regulation as well and to not create sympathetic mode in your head. So it takes a level of awareness about yourself, right? It's very hard to see ourselves too. So I'm going to help you guys just a little bit with seeing yourself and where you might be blocked, right? Um, and so the symptoms of block drainage are very, um, you'll see in just a bit, but there's a lot of them. Many of you guys mentioned hormones in the chat box when I came on here. You know, PMS, irregular periods, um, hormonal abnormalities are definitely a symptom of block drainage. Um, they definitely are chemical communicators, which indicate the body is out of normalcy. Right. Some other symptoms of block drainage include constipation, right? That's a, a blocked bowel pathway, which we want to open rather quickly. We want to kind of triage and troubleshoot that one pretty quickly, because if you're constipated, I can't give you binders. Binders will bind you up more or bulk up the stools. So they're really good for people who have lots of loose stools or diarrhea because they can often help troubleshoot the problem or curbside the problem for you guys. That's one way of helping to stop loose stools, which is often a bile problem. Um, and so, you know, constipation really needs to be triaged early because, gosh, you guys, I can't be giving you things, killing things off, and then it recirculate in your body and you can't release the toxins. You will feel brain fog. You will feel flu-like. You will feel terrible. And that's why many of you quit detoxes probably in the past because your doctors didn't really understand drainage, right? So what I do is I want you guys to have as miserable as detoxing is, I'd like to make it as least miserable as I can on you and make it to where you say, okay, that wasn't so bad and I feel a lot better. I think I could do that again if I have to, right? So the first thing you'll have to do is not do a cleanse constipated. That's no bueno. Um, the other thing you guys want to look for for block drainage is things like acne. If it doesn't come out the bowels, it will come out the skin, right? So constipation definitely can lead to acne or rashes, eczema. A lot of these are um, signs and symptoms that you need to detox. Autoimmunity, all autoimmunity. I start everyone with an autoimmune condition with drainage, right? So that's another sign that there's something stuck in the body that doesn't belong there, whether it be nervous system problems, limbic brain problems, toxins, or something else, pathogens, right? Which autoimmunity often does have some sort of microbe or pathogens involved. Um, other symptoms of blocked drainage, brain fog, right? It's a big one. Fatigue, that's another big one. Um, any sort of... Um, you know, difficulty with UTIs or digestive issues, bloating, acid reflux, all of these kind of vague symptoms that Western medicine likes to label and give you guys a diagnosis is a symptom that the body somewhere is blocked and it's not able to perform its daily rituals at peak performance because there's somewhere that's stagnant. Your body is a machine. It pumps things in, pumps things out. But if it can't get things out and the things are going in that don't belong there, you guys are going to end up sick right? So, oh yeah, everyone's commenting on UTIs and interstitial cystitis. That's a sign there's something or toxin that's colonized the area and it's attracting a microbe for cleanup, right? You guys, this happens a lot. So no matter what you're dealing with out there, my um, solution for you guys is to start opening drainage, right? There's so many people, no matter what chronic condition that you're dealing with, I start you there. And if you come to Wellness Plus, you'll see our hand-holding protocol on drainage pathways that does um, start, dumps everyone in that category before I individualize you guys after that with a protocol, right? Let's talk really quick about um, the liver and some of the bile ducts because I can almost guarantee I would if I was a betting woman out there you guys I would bet with great certainty that probably 75% of you have something wrong with your liver and it doesn't mean that it has to show up in your blood work you know your liver enzymes AST ALT it doesn't necessarily have to show up there it can show up in energetic ways it can show up in many other areas for people sometimes people wake up between 1 and 3 a.m which in chinese medicine is when the liver is really working hard right um, some people have blood sugar issues 
the beginning of pre-diabetes or something. Some people may have a short fuse or frustration. Um, irritability is a sign that the liver um, may energetically need a detox, right? Um, I see a lot of people who can't handle things like caffeine, especially coffee. There's a limit that they can deal with before they get really irritable. Um, some of them can't handle alcohol. They'll have like a two or three day hangover. They'll feel miserable. It's not even worth a glass of wine to them. And then other people won't be able to fast because that's really the liver's job to break big chunks of glucose down into little chunks so you can use them while you're fasting. So there's so many ways, you know, the liver can be blocked here. And there's so many people that deal with a congested liver because the liver is one of our main filtering organs. It's one of our main detox organs. It catches a lot of stuff and converts, you know, antibiotics, xenobiotics, drugs, um, everything that you guys take either goes through the kidney or the liver, right? The bile <clears throat> is made in the liver and stored in the gallbladder, that little sack that everyone gets removed <laughs> on the right side underneath the liver. And that again has some of the same symptoms as the liver as far as frustration and anger and short fuse and things go. But it's really what dissolves fats. And without it, all your guys' stools would float because you would never absorb any fat. You would never absorb any fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, K. Um, that is, you absorb those because your bile works and it scrubs things down like a detergent. And so you're able to absorb fats. If you see undigested food in your stool, your stools float all the time or they're clay colored. That is a problem with the bile, which is really common. <clears throat> and a story about me, I recently took the 444 from Cellcor, which is for Tudkas, for lymphactives, um, for, uh, KL, which is kidney liver support. And I literally, I start, I didn't think anything of it. And then started working. Jason came home, like kind of snapped at me, like, why aren't you ready? And I literally was like, ah, like turned into like the Kraken and attacked him because later I was like, oh my God, what's in my bile? Something really evil is in my bile, you guys, because I, it was very dark. And I, that was an emotional healing detox reaction. Many of you guys may not connect that when you detox, you can get irritable. And that's usually the liver, gallbladder, biliary tree that's um, <laughs> a problem when you guys feel that way. Um, so, you know, and so people are talking about gene mutations, things like that. Definitely epigenetic changes, you guys can, they can be turned negative. We talk about that a lot. Have faith. They can also be turned positive with lifestyle changes, new awareness, new thought patterns. We have proven through science that trauma and stress can add methyl groups and change epigenetically your genes. But guess what? Thoughts and positive environment can do the same thing. So don't hold on to those gene changes like it's a life sentence, please. Don't do that. It's not. It's everybody's like, poor Jason in the comments. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. It was bad, you guys. It was like vicious. I was like, oh my God. I emotionally hurt though. So if you do too, I totally understand you. So Okay, guys, so you've gotten a little bit about the symptoms that you have with block drainage, and you've gotten a little bit about some of the stuff with the liver and the bile ducts. Now, since 75% of you probably have something wrong with this pathway, what happens if the bile ducts and the liver are totally blocked? What goes on? And actually, there's sort of what's known, what we call an emergency hatch. When this happens, um, the lymphatics open up and they let the toxins and things drain into the bloodstream. And this is, this is only when the bile ducts and the liver are blocked and things can't flow properly. But that's when you get things pushed back into your lymphatic system, back into your bloodstream, back into your circulatory system, and other issues systemically can arise due to this problem. Now, this is sort of a severe problem of, um, of not detoxing for years and having lots of exposures and little awareness about things probably, you guys. So keep that in mind. Um, but yes, your body does have functions to try and always fight for you and keep you alive when we're bombarded by things, right? Um, and you guys, everyone has a weak pathway, everyone. Mine is the liver lymph. I'm a really slow drainer of my lymph. Um, and I, it bugs the heck out of me because as a protective me mechanism, my body pushes things into the lymph. So I don't feel bad ever, but it's not the most sightly thing to have your lymph always puffy right? And not drain well. 
So we all have a weak pathway. And my job as a guide is not to heal you guys because you're all different. You, only you can heal you. I help you know the pathway to healing and to understanding your body. So part of my job here is to help you understand how to screen your pathways so that you understand what your weak pathway is. So let's do it together, okay? It might be kind of fun to screen our own pathways together and determine which pathway is your slow pathway, right? In the drainage funnel, we like to call it. And don't worry, we all have one that is to be perfect. And many of us have multiple pathways that are blocked. And you'll see, usually, it can't always be perfect, but usually you'll see um, a correlation with how many pathways are blocked to how, how chronically ill someone is, right? So if you have multiple pathways blocked and you're like, oh, I'm suffering from X, Y, Z, you, we have an answer for you somewhat. And answers are good. You have to get to the root cause to heal you guys. So although answers might be scary, they also give you a roadmap to follow about how to heal, right? So let's screen our pathways together. First and foremost, I mentioned in the beginning, the very first pathway you want to open are the bowels, right? And that's because I can't have you guys constipated. You can't be recirculating toxins when I'm trying to get you better. So many people have problems opening the bowels, right? They don't really know how to do that. And there's levels to this, right? Depending on what your comfort level is, how seasoned the detoxer you are, or how comfortable you are with your own body's symptoms. So with the colon, or the bowels, there are things that you can do. There are supplements you can take. There are programs you can do. There are lots of activities, extracurricular activities, I like to call them, um, to help things. Like for instance, let's start with castor oil packs. Castor oil packs are a lovely way. Um, you can put them on the bowels. You can put them in the right upper quadrant where the liver and gallbladder are. You can put them on your ovaries at that time of the month, ladies, to help with PMS. They help move things, things that are stagnant. They help move bile. They help move, um, they help the production of natural killer cells, which are a type of white blood cell that help fight. So they do lots of lovely things. They also help propel things forward and increase peristalsis in the bowels. So they also help put you in parasympathetic mode. And what I've noticed with people who are constipated or have bowel issues in general, whether loose or constipated, is many times they're in flight or fight. Now, let's have a come to Jesus talk together, you guys, because I, I was stuck in flight or fight and didn't see myself because it's a very insidious process. It usually starts in your 20s when you're a go-getter hustler. And sometimes you repeat these patterns as you get older because neurons that fire together wire together and you've created a rut or a habit over time, right? That becomes your personality. Now you may hold on to this. You may say it's how you get stuff done. Um, but you know it's really not conducive to being in homeostasis or balance in the body. And what we've come to find out is when you push too far into flight or fight, you might get into freeze or fawn where you people please, or you are frozen and can't make decisions because you're stuck in flight or fight. Oftentimes people feel like they don't belong in the world or they're unsafe. They're unsafe to be seen. They're unsafe to act. They're unsafe to make decisions. They're unsafe to be themselves. If you feel that way, you're not alone. There are multiple people who do. And if that correlates with your constipation and your bowel movements, it is your nervous system because you must be in rest and digest, not only digest and secrete hormones, but to poop properly. So many, many people miss this. It's being in flight or fight that interrupts their bowels. Another thing that can really help are pelvic floor exercises coffee enemas, but I like to start people and graduate them up to coffee enemas. So I like to start them on distilled water, then chamomile tea. Chamomile tea, why? Because it binds to GABA receptors in the gut and helps calm down contractions in the smooth muscle. Um, and that's really what people need to do to poop is calm down. <laughs> Honestly, you guys. Um, and then finally, coffee enemas, which help the production of bile, but they're more for the season detoxer. So I hope these little tips help you guys with constipation. If you have loose stools, stay tuned. We'll address that next. So moving up the funnel, you next get to the liver and bile docs, right? And there's other things involved too that on the same level we'll talk about in just a moment. But the liver and bile docs we mostly talked about. We talked about, um, you know, the signs and symptoms, not tolerating, not tolerating coffee, cough, 
coffee or caffeine well, um, not tolerating alcohol well, and also not being able to really fast well without being hangry or sometimes homicidal, you guys. So um, that's the liver. Any sort of frustration or things often can be a parasitic infection, toxicities in the liver, even trauma, right? So there's multiple things when the liver doesn't function well, there are emotions that arise from that. Um, with the bile, the bile is usually in control of loose stools and diarrhea and digested food in the stool. Um, the bile often can cause people, and the liver cause people to itch, eczema, rashes, things like that. Um, the meridians are connected to the eyes and sinus cavities, so people with problems with the liver and bile often will have eye issues, eye floaters, um, poor vision that's getting worse. They may have headaches or migraines too, and you also see PMS issues with the liver because the liver makes cholesterol, which then turn into the sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. And so it's really the liver um, can, that controls kind of the master controller of so many other things. So it's really important to open that one up. Now, how do we do that? What, how do we solve a problem with the liver? Um, the liver is tricky, right? And it if you have SNPs or genetic mutations there, it can continue to be a problem that sort of you need to address over and over, sort of like peeling it Onion, right? Um, and that's okay. That happens for a lot, a lot of people. Um, so just keep in mind, don't be frustrated at yourself because it's really a journey of you learning your own body and what it means. Um, so besides being frustrated and irritated, um, you guys may also have rashes, like I mentioned, constipation, the liver can cause upstream, eye issues, eye floaters, um, and even weight gain sometimes with the liver. So liver, again, coffee enemas, castor oil packs, um, people even complain of a heaviness sometimes here too, um, chewing your food extremely well, getting into rest and digest. Um, if you have your gallbladder removed, I really like people on ox bile, digestive bitters and enzymes. Um, that's really important, right? Um, and even the, um, depending on where you guys have problems, there are different phases in the liver. We can actually target that based on things in our protocol. Um, there's phase one, there's phase two. They require different cofactors and enzymes to work properly. And so we have testing and then we can target in which kind of supplements you need, if you need any, based on how your liver function looks on these functional tests. I hope that makes sense, guys. Um, okay, moving on with the funnel here. Let's see. On the same level as the liver and the bile are things like the kidneys, the lungs, um, cycles, women's cycles are really important too. Breast milk is another drainage pathway we don't talk about a lot, but anywhere you guys release toxins can be considered a drainage pathway. And that's a lot of times why we don't let pregnant women or breastfeeding women detox is because you release things through the breast milk. Um, and cycles too. I definitely have women who've released parasites during their cycle. Absolutely. So, you know, for the lungs, the lungs hold grief and sorrow. Um, the time that you will normally wake up in the lungs are three to five. And these often, um, people will get recurrent lung infections, respiratory infections, oftentimes um, the same time every year. And it can often be around a trauma some grief or sorrow that's stored in their lungs after something that happened to them or a loved one. So it's always good to bring awareness around these things for people just to be sure. Um, the other thing about lungs is there's lots of little nasty uh, suckers like parasites, mycoplasma, um, different bacteria that like to flare up there. So it's really good to look into breath work, um, different percussion for the chest is really great. Um, lymphatic work can really help with that too. Um, the kidneys hold fear. Um, can you guys relate since 2020 fear? Um, and they, this is makes sense because the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys. The adrenal glands make cortisol, the doomsday hormone, right? Um, and so any sort of fear or, um, just plain old, like shock can come from the kidneys and the adrenals. And, um, it's really important 
um, for the kidneys to get tons of hydration. They need the most blood supply besides the pineal gland in the body. And so they need lots of hydration, lots of minerals and electrolytes, um, really some meditation in between the 1 to 3 p.m. time. That's the adrenal and kidney time. And get yourself into rest and digest and work through the fears in your life is going to be huge too. There's also some lovely um, infusions um, that that a lot of the naturopathic doctors do, including Dr. Jessica Renfer, who's on um, our Wellness Plus. And, you know, things like oat straw, nettles, things like that are really lovely for the kidneys too, as well. Um, and then let's see, you guys. Um, what did I do with that? Sorry. So um, besides that, with cycles and PMS, hormones, you guys, it also is a symptom that the body's out of homeostasis. I'll often put you guys on something tailored for what your, what your hormonal problem is, but it's a temporary measure. I don't want anyone on any supplement, and I make three supplements, and I don't want anyone on any supplement longer um, than they need to be because it's really just a band-aid until we can get to the root cause. And since Hormone problems are a symptom of blocked drainage. Once I open your drainage, you guys shouldn't need the hormone supplement anymore if we do it correctly, right? So that's an add-on for people too when they're opening drainage as well, okay? Let's move on. The liver and lymph go into the lymphatic system. This is the most overlooked drainage pathway, you guys, so pay attention here. Um, the lymphatic system is where we dump trauma. In a lot of the very esoteric studies, they think that the microtubules of the collagen in the fascia is where we hold our consciousness. It is a piezoelectric network that talks literally through um, communication through positive and negative solutes and communicators like hormones and neuropeptides. The whole fascia and lymph system covers every single organ in our body and is able to send a space adjustment and split second communication when there's pressure here the rest of my body feels it everywhere because of the fascia and lymph system so it's able to communicate across the body in seconds it's really important for pressure and adjustment in the body and we think it's really where the trauma is stored right um and you know I would say, you know, the lymph is overlooked. People don't realize when their lymph is blocked. They don't understand why it's so important. And that's why if you guys have ever gone to get myofascial release and breath work or anything like that that moves your lymph, you might have started crying. That's a very normal response because there's trauma and memories that are stored in the lymph, right? It's full of water like a gel and water is where our memories are stored. So people will cry when they move the lymph if they've never addressed this before because they don't even understand it's like a feeling there's not an actual memory that comes up but you're releasing things symptoms of stagnant lymph are things like recurrent sore throats because the lymphatic system the heralding organs of the lymphatic system are the tonsils now i know where you all are going you're like oh my god i had my tonsils out when i was seven so it's okay we can still do things with that and help the lymphatic system move. But often when I inject the tonsils with neural therapy, it tells the whole body to drain, right? So that's really important. We can still inject the scar tissue where the tonsils were, you guys, and tell the body to drain because it's that smart. Other things of blocked lymph that signify blocked lymph are things like waking up and like coughing phlegm up, con congestion, um, mucus production can be a problem with the lymphatic system. Um, cellulite adhesions or scar tissue sore lymph and muscles if you guys have chronic pain in your body and you don't have an acute current injury um, think about how it's probably the connective tissue and not the bones so an x-ray won't show much an x-ray just shows bones you need like an mri that shows the connective tissue because believe it or not if the connective tissue is tight or pulled out anywhere it can be like 200 pounds pulling things out from just the fascia. So really um, when people say their neck hurts, their, their, you know, their back hurts, things like that, I always think about the connective tissue in the fascia and where it's tight because of toxins and pathogens that are settled there. Literally when people do like fascia blasting or myofascial release, they'll have flu-like symptoms and they'll be mad at me. 
I'm like, I'm sorry. You literally kicked up dust at the construction site and your body who settled it there and then forgot about it. You know how y'all do that. Your body does that too. So when you kicked it back up, it saw the problem again. It got mad and it said, set off the inflammation cascade, kill, kill, kill. And that it's your body that makes you feel like crap because it's protecting you. So what that tells me when people tell me that, I'm like, you're going to be mad at me. That means you should do it more. <laughs> and, you know, there is a level of tolerance which you guys know what you can tolerate or what you can't. And so go after it with a vengeance, like you want to heal as much as you can tolerate. And I can't tell you what that is. Only you can tell you yourself what you can tolerate and where your boundaries are. But don't give up because you can do hard things. And that's what it's about. It's all chasing the hard things here. And the lymph is one of those things. It's difficult, right? Um, and so the lymph is very esoteric. It has an emotional meaning, has a physical meaning, has emotional and physical symptoms when things are blocked. It's one of those things like the liver. If you can't figure it out, I almost guarantee that the lymph needs to be addressed. Let's say that again. If you can't figure it out, I almost guarantee that the lymph needs to be addressed. Okay, so write that down because that's really important, you guys, and doctors don't know this yet. So the other thing that I want you guys to know is the lymphatic system. It drains in the deep cervical lymph nodes of the, the glymphatic system. Now, the glymphatic system, the glymphatic system is literally a brain drain. They did not discover it until 10 years ago or 11 years ago now, um, and it only works when you get into deep restorative sleep. So it works in deep sleep with your breathing, your rhythmic breathing. The aquaporin channels open and close and they exchange interstitial fluid with your cerebral spinal fluid. And it helps drain probably all those negative crap thoughts you guys thought about all day long over and over. Remember, you get 60,000 thoughts a day. 90% 90, 90 of them are the same thoughts from yesterday. You just drain the same th thoughts every night in your sleep until we learn to change our thoughts, right? Um, and, you know, Pathogens love fat soluble tissue, aka the brain. Toxins love persistent organic pollutants and pesticides. They're fat soluble. That means they love to get in the fat in the brain, 70% fat. So we have to help our brains by sleeping properly. Sleep and pooping are two of the first things I'll address in drainage of people. You guys can't heal. You cannot heal unless you sleep. We got to fix that. And that can be due to toxins, pathogens, or trauma. My dad couldn't sleep for years because his trauma was too much for his body until it was addressed. And his liver kept him up between one and three because <laughs> he had parasites in it. So see, you can put a whole picture together for people when you get their whole story and when you're able to ask the right questions of yourself and your body. Okay, so the brain drain we know works only when you sleep. Right. So also I'm at a standing desk. Standing helps the lymphatic system and the glymphatic system. Cranial sacral therapy, which is super gentle and helps move the plates in the in the on the skull, um, helps the brain drain because when things are aligned and in place properly, things flow properly. Makes sense. Right. Um, and really movement in general. Your lymphatic system doesn't have a pump like the heart. It has the diaphragm, which is a muscle that moves with breath. So exercise, movement, move the valves in your veins. They move the lymphatic system through the diaphragm and they help the brain drain because the lymphatic system is draining. So if you have brain fog and you don't sleep properly, this is the reason why. Okay, and then lastly, not to be forgotten whatsoever, whatsoever you guys, are the, is the cellular health. The cellular health, um, as you guys know, inside the cells is what we're looking at here. And cells are in every organ in every body. Now, the one thing I'm going to be talking about here, which is really important, are the mitochondria. And there's lots of different things inside cells, lysozymes, ribosomes, there's all these things. But why do I talk about mitochondria? Mitochondria are responsible for making energy. They have something they go through called the Krebs cycle, and they have the electron transport chain within the folds of the mitochondria. It's this big process. It's very, it actually takes energy to make energy. You actually need ATP or energy to go into the cycle to make 
32 more ATPs. So if you ain't got no energy, you ain't making no, no more energy. You understand what I'm saying? So if that process stops, you're going to have brain fog. You're going to feel heavy. You're literally going to feel like someone's hitting the pause button on your, on your day all day and everyone's moving past you and you're in quicksand. That's what it feels like. You may have pins and needles sensations in your arms and legs because neuropathy caused by cancer is caused, they cause that because they killed off mitochondria with chemo. You can get that back in many people, right? By addressing the mitochondria, but doctors don't understand this yet. Conventional medicine doesn't understand drainage yet. Okay. So if you guys are tired all the time, it's really important to really address cellular health in the mitochondria. And I want to give you guys a disclaimer really quick about mitochondria here. Mitochondria um, do this thing where they can really only choose between two functions. That is what I just said, which is making energy or ATP. The other thing they're responsible for is immunity and cellular communication. So when they don't have enough energy because they can't make it, they don't have enough ATP to make more ATP, they got to choose. And sometimes they will choose to do the immune function and make you tired all the time, right? And that puts them in cellular cell danger response where they're not able, right? We're trying to treat them and they're not able because we need to calm you down. So many people really need to address their thoughts, their brain function, their limbic system dysfunction and calm down those mitochondrial cellular, cellular response, um, cell danger response before we go trying to treat them. So this is one of the last things I do with people um, is really pump them full of mitochondrial supplements. I have to have them pooping and sleeping and really functioning before I go addressing the mitochondria. And it's really silly to think that every single organ in our body can work when the cells that make them up don't work. So we really have to address cellular health um, while we're opening drainage too. And we have to do it smart and in a wise fashion and in the right order, right? So I hope this is making, making sense to you guys. Yes, someone asked about dry brushing and lymphatic exercises. For sure, I left that out, you guys. That's um, vibration plate. I own, I own one myself um, by Life Pro. I have a dry brush. I use it almost every other day. Um, my, I also do things like fascia blasting. I used to do myofascial release with breath work, which really put me into rest and digest. And I needed that because I couldn't see that I was pinged in flight or fight all the time until someone put me and rest and digest. And I thought, oh, that's what it's supposed to feel like. <laughs> Didn't know what that was supposed to feel like ever. So, you know, all these different things that you guys can address for the fascia and lymph can help to put you, um, make you, not put you, make you remember what it's like to be balanced, like when you were a kiddo, right? And then you forgot, um, you know, society's rules and what they thought you should be doing all the time wasn't a pressure on you. That's what it feels like when you start to heal, right? So um, dry brushing, you guys, 10 to 15 minutes, not very long at all, 10 minutes, not long, 10 minutes on the vibration plate. This should not feel like a job to you guys. This should feel like, this should feel like I'm healing myself. It's all about perspective. I don't want you guys to be so rigid that if you miss something, you're going to be hard on yourself right? This is about learning to find the joy in the journey. Even if you are sick and you don't feel good, how can you reframe it that once you heal, you're going to be the most badass practitioner. Or you're going to be able to tell people how to heal because you did it. You know, that's what's coming for a lot of you. It really is. So you have faith with that. Okay. So I've told you guys how to open drainage for a lot of things with mitochondria. Um, for example, um, it's a little bit different. And mitochondria, one of the best things you can do for them is barefoot on the ground, walking in the sun in the morning. It sounds so stupid and simple, you guys, but it helps you reframe your whole day. It helps you get negative ions from the earth that pull positive things like heavy metals from your body. Um, it helps you recharge your like your your mitochondria kind of like batteries. It helps them recharge in the sunlight, um, and that's free, right? So you know, as, if you want to do that for an hour in the morning, whatever your your time schedule allows for you and feels good for you, um, there are definitely supplements and things you can take. But again, I don't want to be green pharmacy. There's not a magic pill for everything. It's really about a lifestyle and perspective change. And that's why I'm giving you guys all these extracurricular activities to do and not a whole bunch of supplement heavy stuff.
We have that on Wellness Plus. We have pick one or two from each of these categories wherever you're blocked, right? And we'll show you that in just a minute. But it's not, it's not about every single supplement. There may be like, you know, I don't give people more than six to eight, six to eight things at once, ever ever because there's no magic bullet for everyone it's about changing your thoughts and behaviors and doing things that are self-loving that you know are good for your body and help you heal and that's what i'm trying to teach you guys how do i figure out where i'm weak and what can i do with that pathway knowing that it's connected to the rest of my body right um, and yes, I love infrared sauna and sweat is another pathway we can talk about. That's not in the funnel, but sweat is a pathway that's connected to mitochondria and love. If you can't sweat, you probably have poor energy because your mitochondria make ATP, which equals heat, which equals sweat. Your lymphatic system has to move to help you sweat too, right? So if you can't sweat within 10 minutes, 12 minutes in a sauna, it means there, that area needs to be worked on. It might be your lymph. It might be your mitochondria. It might be a combination of both. But really sweating helps to release heavy metals. It helps to release things like um, PCBs. It helps to release a lot of man-made industrial toxins for you guys. So it's something that, as you guys know, if I'm famous for my Kill Mind Sweat Protocol, that is something that gets rid of SIBO, candida, um, parasites except for intracellular ones and even Lyme disease because pathogens can't stand the heat and it helps your body refold proteins that may have been misfolded. So there's a lot of different reasons that kill bind sweat works and the sweat pathway needs to be turned on too. You guys can trigger that with red light. You can trigger that with an infrared sauna with a hot Epsom salt bath with a workout even if you are priv privileged enough to move your body. And so there are many different ways that you can turn on the sweat pathway. The, the issue is it takes consistency to trigger that pathway open every day and you could get in your sauna probably three day three four times a week and then you're able to slowly trigger that pathway open right if you have pots or palpitations stay in there two minutes and add a minute on every week so these are ways in my protocol that i help you guys troubleshoot how to figure out what's going on because as i just mentioned all these pathways to you guys you all, all have these except if you're a guy you don't have cycles or breast milk but everything else by the way semen semen is also a drainage pathway just so you guys know um 1000 we've seen heavy metals and things come through semen no joke guys you're not a scot free i'm serious so so you guys, we, we talk about all this in Wellness Plus, but then I understand that everyone's a little unique and people are going to do things that I've probably never seen before. So the community forum where you could ask me and two other doctors questions because inevitably someone will have something happen that wasn't anticipated in our protocol, right? And so my, what I want you guys to know here is detoxing can be a physical and emotional and a spiritual journey for many people. It can be an awakening process for people. It can be a struggle like no one's business for people. It can be emotional for people, depending on what toxicities are coming from what organ. You may be angry. You may be worried. You may be frustrated. You may not be able to sleep and have anxiety. And all these are common symptoms from starting to open drainage and release things from the body that your body missed before. You're giving your body a second chance to see this toxin and get rid of it because I can't do it for you. You can't consciously do it. Your body has an innate intelligence that we have to rattle awake because it's forgotten. And that's what opening drainage is all about, right? So, um, so where do we go now, right? Um, I think now I think it's okay to talk about the protocol and I want you guys to um, hang tight here and stay with us um, because Rain is going to show you, Rain is my community manager, many of you guys probably know her, she's fabulous and um, she helps me with social media if you guys have noticed this doing so good. But anyway, um, she is going to talk about some deals that we have that are really going to shock you, I hope you guys. She's going to talk about the platform and show you guys just a quick um, little um, overview of the, pro of the protocol page and stay tuned because I, after that, I'm going to do a live Q&A with you guys so I'm going to bait you all to stay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're just going to go through the protocol really quick. We're going to go over drainage pathways, which we just talked about. And what it's going to do is drive what I just talked about at home and put it kind of in black and white paper for you guys to understand what I'm talking about. Right. And I hope that makes sense. Um, 
So this is why I chose to make Wellness Plus because I was telling you guys one-on-one -on -one consults. This is to broadcast my message to a big group of you so we can heal a bunch of people. And that's why this is my passion project. So I'm gonna bring Rain on for you guys just to share her screen and show you guys Wellness Plus. I think you're gonna love it. And then hang on, hold tight with your questions. We're, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna answer them in the chat box for you guys in just a second. Okay, let's see here. Let me see if I can do this. See, oh, bam. What's up, girl? Oh, did I un let me unmute you? Or can you unmute yourself? Hmm. Can everyone hear me? Ah, can hear you. Yes. Yay. Hi, everybody. All right. So I will share my screen and I will show you our protocol. So I am Rain. I am the community manager at Wellness Plus. So if you guys ever need help on the platform when you're a member, you'll get a welcome message from me. And anytime you're on the site, you can message me. I don't answer any health-related questions, but I answer anything about the site. So I will show you what I got, what we got going on. Yeah. Woohoo. Okay, so this is our drainage pathways protocol. So all of our protocol pages will be set up in a very simple form to give you hand-holding experience so you don't feel lost while you're going through it. Um, so basically we have the page and then an overview of what the protocol is about, which Jess just went super in depth about drainage pathways. And then we have all the symptoms listed. So block drainage, you can experience all or some of these symptoms. It varies per person, but this can kind of help you determine which protocol you'll need if you're experiencing the symptoms. And then you scroll a little bit down and you will see the learn section. So you'll see any courses we have on this protocol as well as webinars that are related. Then you'll see next, you'll see the identify, which is where we have testing. So any tests that are listed under here, we usually get some sort of special deal for being a Wellness Plus member. And they are specifically related to the protocol. And on top of that, you don't need a practitioner to order them for you. You can order them yourself. So after that, we have the action, which is where we're going to take action and we're going to pick out our protocol and actually take the supplements or get into the sauna. So we have it set up where we have a little blurb about which drainage pathway. So here is bile and it will kind of tell you why you need to work on this. And then it kind of just go over all the supplements here. And some of the extracurricular activities, like you can see for bile, we have an enema kit. And then it kind of just goes through each category of sections of drainage. Bile can I, busters. Can I just say, I took a long Hormones. And then you'll see like over, over the picture what kind of discount you get for being a Wellness Plus member. And underneath, you can view it and go to purchase it. Scroll all the way down past all of the actual supplements and modalities. <laughs> And you will see the support. So here in this section, you're going to go see any articles that are related to the protocol, any quickies. So quickies is my personal favorite on the site. So the section, once you get to them, will look like this. So I'll show you guys one on liver stagnation. So the quickies are going to be opened as like a little PDF. You can scroll down and you will see like the definition of what the condition or the drainage pathway or the diagnostic disease of what it is. And then um, I usually go over a little, little blurb depending on what the subject is. And then you will get to the recommended testing that we'll have on some of them, as well as symptoms again that are more specific. And then you see the root causes. So this is super helpful to so say you do have liver stagnation you open this quickie and you can kind of go through and see which ones maybe align with you. Like maybe you had right here, you had mercury in your mouth. So that could be your root cause. So you kind of got to be a detective on here and figure out what is relevant to you based on your life, your exposures. And then you will see solutions. So we go anywhere from supplements, um, medications to ask your doctor about, diet, and extracurricular activities or really anything that Dr. Jess and 
her team of doctors recommend for the condition. So then back to the protocol. At, toward the bottom, you'll see community. So this is our community form. So whenever you have health related questions, you can submit a form and one of the doctors or community members will respond. So this is kind of what it looks like on the protocols pages and I already have it open. So you can click on the topic. So I'm gonna click on cell core. So this is a form where you can ask any questions related to cell core. And you'll see, depending on the topic, other members, other doctors will get in and kind of interact a lot. So some of these topics will have like 40 responses because everybody is dealing with the same thing. So not only are doctors helping us out, but we're helping each other out as well. Forms just in there. After the forums, you'll see consults. So we have a vetted practitioner directory here at the bottom. And you'll see, you can click on like who specializes in what. Let's see, we're working on drainage. Do we have that on this one? I think that's all of these people. And it, if you click on it, it will bring you usually right to the practitioner's direct site. So, let's see what else we have. But I think that's all basically the protocol. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. We try to do pretty hand holding here. And then right now for our, <clears throat> our webinar attendees, we have some special deals, which I will show you. So we have a couple different bundles. So if you guys want to join and become a member of our site, we have two different deals right now. So we have some deals with labs. So the first one we have is hormone bundle. So either bundle is $2.99 and it's normally about $500. So you'll get a hormone test with this bundle, one hormone hero, and you'll get a subscription to Wellness Plus and also a free extra course. So you'll get two courses total. So you could go through two protocols. So you could start with the drainage and then maybe you have lived in a house with mold and you read on the site that you probably need to address mold. So then next you could take the mold protocol. And the second bundle that we have is a gut bundle so you get a leaky gut test and then you'll also get dr jess's formulated gut hero a one month silver subscription and an additional one free course and then if you don't want to do one of the bundles we also have whatever package you pick if you use the code open drainage you can get a free extra course with purchase yep Perfect. Perfect. Yay. Love it. So we have these, this is an exciting offer for you guys. And so we are, didn't announce it. We kind of waited on the webinar here to surprise you guys with the bundles. And um, we do have a limited amount. So if you guys are interested, we have one for hormones, one for gut, and it comes with hormone hero, gut hero, and testing. And so that's what we're really proud of on our site. You don't need a doctor to order any of the tests, right? So I'm trying to teach you guys how to be smart with your money rather than people spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on testing. Let's streamline what you need here so we can be efficient. Thank you so much, Rain, for announcing that for all of us. It was awesome. And so now it's time for the Q&A. So I will let you go. And thank you. Thank you, my dear. All right, guys. So I think this is probably what all of you have been waiting on. We're a little over time. I apologize for that. But I know you guys have been so patient with me. You stayed and you listened to about Wellness Plus. You listened to about drainage. I really appreciate your attention. So let's start the questions now. Um, and I'll get to as many as I can in 15 minutes for you guys, if that's OK. Um, and then remember, this is always recorded. So you can show it to your friends and family members as well, as long as you're signed up. And we hope to see you in Wellness Plus where you can ask me questions any dang time you guys want to. OK, so, OK, can you address bile reflux causing gastritis? So bile floating in the stomach without food while no gallbladder. I've been taking digest zymes with HCL or hydrochloric acid. That's what makes the, our stomach acid. Low pancreatic enzyme taking Thorne's pancreatic supplement, a gallbladder from and, and gallbladder from ancestral supplements, but still struggling with bile reflux. 
So um, my suggestion to you would be at this point to look for toxicities. I know you said you did not have a, gall a gallbladder, so the, the liver is making the bile and it doesn't really have a pouch to store it in anymore, right? So that's a little inconvenient. So basically um, you're doing all the right things. Make sure you're chewing your food well, 30 to 40 times before you swallow. I would also like you before you, when you eat a meal to sit down, I don't want you to be yelling at your significant other or your kids. I don't want you to be thinking about what somebody said about you or watching TV. I want you to sit down. Five deep breaths. I want you to think about the thing in the life that makes you the most great. And then I want you to eat. Okay. It may sound silly. It's going to really put your body into a position to be able to absorb and receive food. Um, I also want you to be honest with yourself and if you're stuck in fight or fight, that can definitely cause some acid reflux. Things won't go move and propel downward in peristalsis because you're stuck in flight or fight, not rest and digest. So opposite things will happen. The other thing I would like you to look at is pathogens and toxins. Like I mentioned, things like H. pylori can do this. SIBO can do this. Um, CFO can do this. So there's all kinds of different um, types of pathogens that can actually um, cause a problem um, with acid reflux and gastritis as well. Um, so I hope that helps. I don't know how much you've done, but I hope that is helpful for you. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to catch up with all your questions here and you guys keep going. Um, ah, so many questions. Let me see. Because I do want to be respectful and try and get everyone's um, question answered here. Um, let's see here. Let me scroll if you guys are hitting them fast quickly. Um, oh, I lost my place, you guys. How do you know if your detox and phase protocol is working? Where to move forward with the next phase? Cell core phases, for example. So, for example, you guys probably won't know when to move from phase like two and three. Once you guys get into the killing phases, you can move pretty quickly. The, the roadblock for most people is going to be nervous system, um, drainage, and we actually have a protocol that we launched called Roadmap to Health. And the reason I made Roadmap to Health was because I kept seeing three, four big, huge, like stumbling blocks to people being able to heal. And that was water damage in the home that was hidden and people couldn't see it. And they weren't getting the right test to test for it, which was an ERMI test, to test for bacteria and mold. And um, nervous system dysregulation, which I recommend Dr. Katz program, Primal Trust, which we have in our store in Wellness Plus with a big discount. And, I, and the other thing are teeth issues, right? Um, cavitations, mercury fillings, mold um, in the fillings, things like this. So we have a protocol for that and dentists that we trust that we vetted as well, because these are huge problems that can cause them it's systemic health issues with people. So I wanted to troubleshoot that with people. Many times if you can't keep your drainage open, it's something like I've talked about in a roadmap to health that is going to be the stumbling block for people, if that makes sense, right? So it's really important for you guys to kind of be able to troubleshoot those things. And every now and then there'll be something that I have haven't seen before and people will be an anomaly, right? So it's really important for you guys to understand your drainage, where you're blocked, and it shouldn't take more than one or two months to open drainage. If you guys are really flailing about and struggling with that, there's something that we're missing. And it could be something I just named. It could be something different. It could be that we haven't found your right recipe for healing your nervous system, right? It could be something that simple, um, but it's just really hard for us to see ourselves, if you will. Let me see here, guys. I'm trying to scroll all the way up. Here we go. Here I am. Okay. Um, how to ground in the winter when things are best for when things are best for sleep. So there are grounding mats. I'm actually standing on one at my standing desk right now. Um, of course, all these gadgets are not necessary to heal. They just make it easier. Um, it's really good for you guys to be cold. Actually, it's really good for you guys to go out barefoot, even when there's snow on the ground and grounds. Um, do it do it because we are not meant to be in 72 degree weather in an air conditioned or heated house all the time. We're supposed to jump in cold lakes and be hot sometimes and uncomfortable. It's how we deal. It helps us deal with stressors of the world more. So do it, go outside in the winter and ground. 
What to do if I suspect mold? Which test, ERMI or mycotox? Great question. In fact, so many people, you guys, 80% of houses have previous water damage and 20% of people have a genetic susceptibility, which makes them their body not be able to recognize mold pathogens. So they suffer until they get out of the mold and even after the mold. So if you suspect mold, um, you don't have to see it. You don't have to necessarily smell it, all that stuff, you guys. I would recommend either a test for the body or test for the home. If you're privileged enough to do both, it's great to match up the species of mold to make sure it's that what comes out of your body is what is in your home. You see what I mean? So an ERMI test is what I love. We are have a working relationship with EnviroBiomix. EnviroBiomix, I love them because it's not just mold in the house that can make us sick. It's a gram positive bacteria and a lot of gram negative bacteria too that can also grow in water damage. And so EnviroBiomix, this ERMI test, is able to test for bacteria and mold. And so that really is helpful for a lot of people. So I recommend that you guys check them out. Enviro Biomix is the name of their company. It's a really stupid name. Great army test. <laughs> How do you really know? Oh, well, I just read that one. Sorry. Um, oh, thank you guys. I hope you love the recording. I'm glad you like it. It's really just for you guys and for the community for showing. I thank you for supporting me. Okay, Amy wants to know about breast implants. So we are launching a breast implant um, illness course. We're waiting on the, my courses to be filmed and edited, and that's it, and it's ready to go. Breast implants is one of the, I interviewed a breast implant illness um, nurse practitioner and specialist. She is my expert on my breast implant illness course, and all she talked about was drainage. And let me tell you why. Because what we're finding from breast implants is both the saline and the silicone have silicone in them. Okay. And silicone is not natural. Silica is. Silicone is not. Silicone with an E is man made industrial toxin. And there's so many gel bleeds from these implants. So when there are gel bleeds, they're able, um, silicone can leach into directly into the lymphatic system. So it is so important for women with breast implants, whether they have them in or they're getting them out and they have explanted to work that lymph, work it. I'm serious as much as you guys can, because the lymph is what is holding the silicone, which is keeping you sick. So all she talked about on my, I couldn't believe it on my interview with her was opening drainage and lymphatic specifically. So I think if you guys are struggling with breast implant illness, um, that is really where you need to start out in my opinion. This is why I stress so much with you guys, no matter what you're dealing with, I don't care what it is, chronic issue that keeps recurring, you need to address drainage. That is why I created this course, okay? Um, someone says, great job, Brian. Thanks to you too. Perfect. Um, if you suspect mold, you suspect tooth issues with root canal, have Lyme, and mouth breathing. It's overwhelming. Where to best start? I feel you, Diane. Um, so the tooth issues are adding a huge element to this. In bioregulatory medicine, we, we look at scars, we look at lymph, we look at teeth. That's how important teeth are. They're literally the human homunculus. Every tooth represents an organ in the body or a meridian. Literally, they have miseducated us so bad on teeth. So I would start with drainage, Diane, for sure. I would start working your drainage, if, especially if you're out of mold. Some people have problems when they're in mold. They have trouble opening their drainage. If they have sensitive genes, I have to get them out of the house. Or they just spin their wheels and waste their money right? So really, I would start with opening drainage, see where you can get, especially if you're not in the moldy house anymore. Um, then if you hit a roadblock or you can't get any further, we can address the tooth or root canal, like get a cone beam scan to see what's going on. It's a CT to see if and get a, a trained eye to read it because regular dentists will mess it all up. They don't have a trained eye to read them. And really your, your Lyme, um, and your mouth breathing are a problem because probably cavitations and a root canal, I don't know if you have mercury fillings, this kind of stuff, but I would guarantee that your lymph is a problem. Um, your nervous system might be a problem because all this connects with all these nerves in the cranium. Um, and so I would address nervous system dysregulation, um, drainage, and then go after that tooth because the teeth are, are really expensive. And I try and delay that for people as much as I can to get them better. Okay, let's see. Uh, hold on a second. I'm skipping so many of your guys' questions by accident, and I don't want to do that because um, it's actually scrolling every time people ask questions. So I apologize, you guys, for that. Um, let me scroll back up where I was. 
Let's see if I can find it. So many questions. Okay, here we go. And you guys should listen to the questions just because um, so many of the things I say will help you too, right? It ties into so many other things that people have. So even if I don't get to your questions, something that you will get from this will um, be important for you. Oh, it won't scroll up anymore. Okay. Acne all of a sudden. Ah, I just missed it. <laughs> Shoot, you guys. I'm at the very top and it won't let me go up any further. Okay. what? Um, let's see. Sweat from the neck down but not the head after years of sauna. You know, aura ring scores are great um, with not with enough deep sleep, what gives? So you might have fat soluble toxins in the brain. If you have a sauna that leaves your head out, that might be why you're not sweating. If you're inside the sauna, um, you may want to add a red light right on your cranium to see if that can help increase the circulation there for things. Um, but I wonder if you have things like brain fog and headaches and fatigue that go with symptoms of a blocked you know, glymphatic system or brain drain. If you said yes, then I would almost send you to things like cranio craniosacral therapy and lymphatic massages to help that brain drain. One of your thoracic ducts here might be blocked, which helps the brain drain as well. So I'd really go after the lymphatic system with symptoms like that, right? Um, okay. Oh, so many questions, you guys. I'm skipping so many of them. Um, SIBO protocol we are coming out with. Don't worry. My gut hero help will help you with that. Gut hero is something for a parasite, um, candida, and SIBO um, cleanse. But make sure your drainage pathways are open. No matter SIBO or anything, I start you guys with drainage, okay? Um, sensitivity to alcohol and caffeine causes heart fluttering. Your liver is a problem, my friend. You're not able to break down caffeine. It's staying in your system longer and irritating things in your circulatory system. So I'd really work on your liver and biliary tree um, to help your liver be able to process caffeine a little bit easier. Um, you may want to look at matcha or some other alternative until you can kind of feel better with um, heavy caffeine like coffee. Um, let's see. Drainage pathways tips for dealing with active H. pylori gut infection. Excuse me. H. pylori is not usually root cause. It's usually something else like dysbiosis or low stomach acid or something else going on that's making it hospital, hospitable for H. pylori to live there. Oftentimes it's parasites and the tests are inaccurate. Um, the most accurate test I found is parasites.org, which we offer a huge savings on our site. When I find something that works, I try and pass the savings on to you guys. Um, and so that test I took myself, they found nematode larva in me, yummy. So um, I would definitely look to something like parasites and work on opening that bowel pathway and the liver pathway if you're suffering from a pathogen like that. Um, something is not flowing properly, properly and something is stagnant to allow it to continue to live there, right? Um, let's see. Let's see, taking longer. I was hoping to try for baby or two. Super gentle, blah, blah. Not sure if I should just have a baby or do mold after. So I always recommend if you guys have the option to detox before you get pregnant. Um, for sure, I think that's something important because so many people ask me um, when, what can they do? Can they detox when they're pregnant and breastfeeding? It's the number one question I get. It literally what makes me want to pull my hair out because I get it like probably 20 times a day. So I recommend that you guys, if you have the opportunity to please try and open drainage and detox before you get pregnant, it will make your epigenetic changes healthier and more positive. It will make for a healthier baby. And so if you can put that time off just to take, even if it's just three to six months to detox. It can make a big difference in how you feel during the pregnancy, maybe even how your labor goes and definitely how resilient your body is in the postpartum period, right? So that's important, really, really important. Um, let's see, hubby hate has a severe acid reflux at night on famotidine, which is pepsid, throws up in sleep, itches a lot. Oh, he has parasites, itching, <laughs> itching, that's the liver. Um, he has parasites like famotidine. Listen, listen, acid reflux is not due to high acid. It's due to low acid. You're supposed to have acid in your gut. Your pH is supposed to be 1.5 to 3. How else do you break down food and disintegrate it and, and digest it? How else does that happen? If you have low stomach acids, things will sit in your gut like an anvil. What they're doing is creating a forever customer by keeping him on Pepsi for the rest of his life. The package in starts says six months to a year, and they're keeping him on that forever without changing his diet or parasite cleansing him. It's malpractice. Literally. Um, any idea why someone will be struggling with internal shingles for every year? I'm not really sure what internal shingles are. Usually they come out on the same dermatome or pattern on the skin. 
So um, shingles, you guys are going to find this really interesting and we'll end here. And I promise I will do more of these free webinars. So you guys will have to come and answer your questions. I'll be happy to do it. And I'm having fun doing these with you guys. But about shingles. Shingles will reactivate um, with COVID. Any herpes virus will. Epstein-Barr is also a herpes virus that reactivates with COVID. And 73% of long haulers have reactivated Epstein-Barr virus. That's why when we launched our, our long haulers course today, we included a viral panel that checks for an early antigen for Epstein-Barr. And I included a whole blood work panel that helps diagnose long haulers. Because COVID can reactivate things like shingles. COVID can reactivate Epstein-Barr all the time, all day long. The other thing that can happen is people have parasites. Now, we've shown in the studies that things like strongyloides and leishmania have retroviruses they play interplay with in the body. And what happens is if you have something like strongyloides um, or leishmania, the viruses they come with, like the, HTL, the HTLV virus, can actually cause a more severe parasitic infection because they interplay with each other and act like frenemies to take over the immune system. So what I found was when I tried to get a cold sore, which is a HSV-1 cold sore I've had since I was 10, I had been re-exposed to COVID when I was speaking in Vegas. This is last month. Um, I immediately thought, oh, it's interplaying with a parasite. I took three jobberfuls of Kim Rogers Parathy, four Virad Chem binders, viruses, radiation, and chemicals, and I stopped that sucker from coming out. I stopped it. It came out 10%. I got to film all my videos in the studio that day. So when people, you can literally stop it in your tracks because they interplay with parasites. Shingles is a herpes virus that is interplaying with parasites and with COVID. So we have to get to the root cause to stop it. Does that make sense? These are just a few of the tips that I give you guys in my protocols on Wellness Plus. And if you like my information, um, you know, guys, I gave up my medical license. This is all I got now. <laughs> Wellness Plus. So if you like my information, I really appreciate your support. I really, I really love you guys from um, for, for, for everything you do. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your support. And if you like this webinar, we're going to do a lot more. OK, so thank you guys. Please let me know if you like the information, how we can make Wellness Plus better. We're continuing to improve every day and we've got at least um, seven more protocols that we're launching, including viruses, including hormones, including breast implant illness. We just launched long haulers. We already have drainage, roadmap to health, lime, mold, um, heavy metals. There's so many already launched. So thank you guys so much. I hope you learned a little bit um, and you could also be your own best doctor. Um, and we have a giveaway for you guys. So don't just leave just yet. We have a giveaway for you guys. Rain, am I bringing you back on for this? Yes. Okay. Let me bring Rain back on for you guys that are still on. Half the people are gone now. So whoever is here is very lucky. Um, Rain, I think you're still muted. Maybe. Okay. Let me see. There you Anyone go. Anyone who stayed till the end, we have three different things to give away. So we'll pick you guys from who's on here. So the first Woo! thing. I know. I'm so excited. The first, <laughs> the first thing that we have to give away is three sessions of emotion and body code with our friends at, I always say their business name wrong, Love Light Squared. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> so how are we picking those? We need to pick them from the chat, right? Yeah, we need to pick people who stayed here. I want to reward you guys for staying here the whole time and hanging with me for almost two hours. You get something free, hopefully. And yeah. let me tell you, Motion Body Code has helped me and Rain both so much. So yeah, we love it. <laughs> yeah. And the second thing that we're giving away, we want to say thank you so much to Kim Rogers and Mrs. Rogers Hood Apothecary. We're going to give away an entire Parify kit and the Fulvic Soak. Yes. If you haven't seen the Fulvic Soak, go watch Jess's uh, Instagram highlights. You can see worms come out of her feet. <laughs> <laughs> the third thing that we're going to give away is a happy bum, enema bulb, and a hormone blend for the bulb. Yeah. Three people from the chat. This might take a second, guys. Yeah, you guys. Thank you for staying and thank you for, for your support. We want to have fun with you guys. Okay. I don't know how we do this. <laughs> Part of our tech team is helping us, guys, so just don't mind us. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's going so quick. I know. <laughs> Dude, you should see me trying to answer their questions. I was like, oh my gosh, they're disappearing, you guys. Okay. 
Jessica Johnson, you won the first giveaway, which oh. is the three heart wall sessions of emotion code body code. So it's going so quick. I was going to type my email, but with Jessica Johnson, please email me rain at drjessmd.com. If you forget that, just DM Jess on Instagram and we'll make sure we watch for you. Okay. Yes. Jessica Johnson. Rain at drjessmd.com. Yes. We're so excited. We hope you enjoy it. I can tell you like you, it's going to make such a difference for your healing journey. I promise. Yes. Okay, so we're waiting on the next person to be picked. I can't wait. I know. So, who wants I like to forgot to give away. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> who wants to win a Parify kit? It stopped my cold sore. It stopped shingles. I'm serious. It has stopped my post-COVID histamine reactions like a dream. So, I'm okay. <laughs> so are we ready? The second winner who is going to win a Parify kit. I got it. Oh my God. Is is Angela, I'm sorry if I say your name wrong, Campos, Campos. Campos, Angela Campos. Angela Campos, please email me rain at drjessmd.com to claim your prize and we will get you your Parify kit. Oh, look at you got it. I know. Jason just brought it to me. I was like, hello, Amazon, you guaranteed it by Thursday. <laughs> uh, and then, so we have the last winner who is going to win the brand Happy Bum and I'm a Bulb and Hormone Blend. So good. And our tech team is grabbing the winner right now. <laughs> <laughs> and this is fun too. So it's a little bit different if you guys haven't done an enema. It's like this little bulb and you actually use it to administer the enema and you hold it in. It's a less amount of water and it's going to be a hormone blend. So it's going to help balance hormones. Oh, there's some people on here who need that. I saw them. I know. All right. <laughs> Jane, Jasmine, Kim, you are the third winner. You're going to get the Happy Bum Enema Kit from us. So <laughs> just email rain at drjessmd.com to claim your prize so I can get your information. And if you don't remember that, just DM Dr. Jess on Instagram and we'll watch for you. Yeah, guys. And please come to our next, we're going to have lots of webinars for you guys. And we do this all the time on Wellness Plus here. And we love to have surprises, giveaways. And thank you guys so, so much for being here. I think that's all the announcements, right, Rain? We did it. I think that's it. If you guys, you guys need help picking out what package to get on Wellness Plus, you can email me or if you text the number back that texted you, that goes right to me. So I can help you answer any questions and I'll give you a promo code for a free extra course with purchase. Woo! Thanks, Woo! Ray. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. This will be recorded. Please show your loved ones and people you care about who need to know this information. This should be taught in all medical schools. And you can heal. Don't forget to tell yourself that every single day you are healing. You're doing great. Rain healed herself with our platform. Right, Rain? I did. I just used Wellness Plus. I didn't need any doctors. There you go, guys. <laughs> I'm telling you. So thank you so much. I love you all. You're our tribe. We appreciate you. Have a great week and weekend. And we will do it again soon. Good night. Bye. Bye.